hidden in plain sight. It's obvious. It's obvious. So if you're interested in being in a business where you're with your friends and you're with your peers and you're with people who are like you, you need to be in a multi-level uh, multi company. Now, if you have even a tiny little bit of understanding about nutrition, about the power of nutrition, then you want to be participating in a nutritional supplement program. If you don't have if you don't have the desire or the drive to be in a nutritional supplement program, you are not participating in the data that's available to you. Do you understand this? There is so much literature to support the use of nutritional supplements to reverse, reverse degenerative disease, to create the terrain where de de degenerative breakdown disease does not occur, that if you are not aware of it, you are either under a rock and completely oblivious, or you just don't care. But if you do care and you are participating, you're going to be in a nutritional supplement program. So you got a multi-level model that allows you to be with your peers and with your colleagues and with your friends and with your loved ones and make friends and hang out with people like you and you know you're going to nutritionally supplement, you're crazy not to participate in this business. Okay? You're cra it, once you have those two, and some people ask me, oh, how do I get people to talk? I don't try to convince anybody anything. I just say, hey, listen, if you know about supplementation, and most people do, and if you don't, then that's fine. Then, you know, God loves you anyway, as I say. God loves you too. That's fine. Okay? But if you know about nutritional supplementation on the one hand, and you know and you understand the power and this, this intimate relationship forming business that is multi-level by nature, how many of you guys are in multi-level of some kind? Multi-level is where the guy on top of you benefits when you benefit, and the guy below you benefits when you benefit. So everybody's networked. They're all connecting each other up. That's what, that's what the model is, basically. So it's called, a, it's called a network. They used to call it a pyramid. It's not a pyramid, although it is shaped that way, but pyramid doesn't have a product. Multi-level is when the guy above you benefits from you. That's cool. That's cool right there. Does your boss benefit from you? Does your boss benefit from you? You better believe he benefits from you. But are you getting, be are you getting benefit from him? Is the question. When you do well for your business, when you do great for your car company or your computer company or wherever, does that show up for you? No, multi-level, you get cash for that. Same with below you. It's, there's a connection to ev everybody's connected in this kind of networking way. And so it's a beautiful, beautiful model. And it's a fair model. And that's why in longevity, why I like longevity, is there's people who are average, regular people. Regular people. And regular people making 10 or 15 grand a month. Regular people. Nothing special. They're just nice, good people. So that's what I want to say about multi-level, and that's what I want to say about participating in the nutritional supplement program. But before the reason I really want to talk, what I really want to talk about, I want to be clear though about the multi-level deal. Multi-level is awesome. Keep your ears open and keep your uh, keep your mind open. What we need to understand if we're going to take care of the body is the body doesn't break down in different ways. This is the most important thing that you can understand about how your body is, how your body degenerates, really. And that's what we're talking about here is degenerative disease. Degenerative disease is diseases of breakdown. Okay? Diseases where the body decays, where it breaks down, where it degenerates. But the body's a regenerating system, so right away we know we have a problem. The body does not degenerate Specifically, it degenerates generically. It, gener it degenerates and break down, breaks down the same way whether you have MS or whether you have acne or whether you have psoriasis or whether you have hyperpigmentation or whether you have anything. It breaks down the same way. And while we think our flavor of disease, we, people get attached to their diseases, I've noticed. Some people are very attached to their aid. I have this, and I have, I have amyotropic lateral sclerosis, and I have superintiva, hyper, superintiva dental hyperhidrosis, or whatever that is. You know? I love the names they give people. I love the names. By the way, your diagnosis is not a disease. It's a label. It's a description. It means nothing except for a guy can go into a book and look it up and see how to treat you with it. That's all it means. The body breaks down generically, but yet if you go to the World Health Organization statistics, they'll tell you there's 12,000 different diseases. There is not 12,000 different diseases. There's basically one. You're breaking down. That's the disease. And it doesn't matter if it's in your thyroid, and it doesn't matter if it's in your heart, and it doesn't matter if it's in your head or your nerves or your bowels. Or, it matters that it's breaking down. And this is this idea that we have to go over here and over here and over here and you're like a little boy with his finger in the dike and you're putting a hole here and here and here and here and you're trying to plug up all these holes. It's just a way of obfuscating, of disempowering us. Disempowering us, of taking the power away from us and putting it into an authority 
that's external from you. You do not need an authority that's external for you once you understand how the body breaks down. Okay, now how does the body break down? Well, if we're going to understand how the body breaks down, we have to understand the body, right? Make sense? Well, just like, just like the body, uh, the disease state is not complicated, in a way the body's not complicated. There's only really two parts to your body. How do you like that? Only two parts to your body. Anybody ever hear me talk about raisin bread? Okay, what's raisin bread? Your body's like raisin bread. That's all it is, raisin bread. What are the two parts of your body? Or the two parts of raisin bread? What is it? Raisin and bread. Okay, yes, raisin and bread, obviously raisin bread. Well, your body is raisin bread. Of course, in the world of science, we, we have fancy ways of saying it. We call it parenchyma and mesenchyma. Anybody hear those terms? <laughs> parenchyma and mesenchyma. Okay, that's what it is. It's just, but I call it raisins and bread. You may know it better as cells and extracellular matrix. That's all the body is. It's cells that are embedded in a, in a matrix in a, a matter of some kind. Matrix and matter come from the same term. So you have cells, like raisin bread. You have cells, and then you have stuff in between them. That's it. Why is this important? Because this is where the disease process begins, which should be obvious because this is what the body is. To understand the disease process, to understand the breakdown process, you have to understand the bread, and you have to understand the raisins. And that's all you have to understand. Okay, so we're good. It doesn't matter if it's a thyroid cell or, or a toenail cell. It doesn't matter if it's a toenail cell or it's a heart cell. It's a cell and it's in a matrix. That's it, people. It's a cell and it's in a matrix. That's all you need to know. So now what do I mean by this, okay? Well, let's talk about a cell first. Okay, you know, you, I, I, I like listening to conspiracy theorists and I like the drama of the day and government this and doctor that and you know, I get involved with it. It's kind of titillating, I admit. I used to watch news, I don't watch that anymore, but I, I follow the, the mainstream culture, but when I do, I sometimes think to myself, if people knew what a cell was, that's all we would be talking about. We would never talk about anything but cells, because when we understand the amazingness that makes us up, people, listen to me, you're a hundred trillion cells. You are made up of a hundred trillion cells, and if I take a little piece out, I will, and I put it under a microscope, it would be like an animal. It would walk to food. It would run away from poisons. It would reproduce. It would have, has a little skeletal system. And she has 100 trillion of them. We have 100 trillion. They make us up. Come on. You got to say that's cool. Come on. It's not just me, right? That's amazing. That's amazing. But you know what? It gets even more amazing. It gets even more amazing. Because then we got to see what a cell is. What is a cell? All right now, 100 trillion, OK. I admit it, 100 trillion, that's kind of like you know, 200 trillion, 100 trillion, what's, what's 100 trillion between friends? You know, that's like a number that we can't even grasp, so it's just so big. First of all, how long do you think it would take you to count your cells one by one, if you counted one by each second? Any guesses? 2,000 years? Guess again. Any guesses? How long it take you to count a cell? Uh, how many years? 100 trillion seconds. seconds. That's good. That's good. How many years? They would take. Okay. All right. I get it, smart Alec here. I'll, I do the jokes. All right. All right. It would take you 32 million years. That's how big 100 trillion is. It's 32 million years. That's the kind of numbers we're talking about. But, dude, it gets way more intense. Relax. Check this out. Each one of these little cells is composed of as many working parts, working parts, gears, hinges, in this little cell that is 100 trillion of them, that is about a, a 1 200th of a head of a pin. Anywhere from 1 200th to 1 100th, you could fit 100 cells end to end on a head of a pin. 100 to 200, that's the kind of scale we're talking about. Yet within that little tiny gel structure, you have as many working parts as you do in a Boeing 767. Six million working parts in this little, now come on. <laughs> It, it, you gotta see that's cool, right? And right? And then on the outside, you have a information processing chip called a membrane on the outside of each one of these things. And on the inside, you have a circle that is packed with 18 feet of DNA in a little space that's one two hundredth or to one one hundredth the size of a head of a pen. Please, come on, you cannot be that cold. You gotta be going, you gotta be blown away. Come on, where's your heart, people? Come on. <laughs> Come on, are you that jaded? It's amazing. That's what we are, and that's what we should be focusing on. 
I say I like to, I get titillated by the conspiracy stuff and all the fear stuff and all that, but you know what? That's what counts. And when I say a doctor can't help you, I mean he can't help you at that level. Because that cell is not stupid. And it isn't going to take what the doctor's giving or any the medical model's giving. It has to be poisoned and it has to be hacked. Ripped out as in hacked. Cut open is what I'm talking about. So, anyway, within that cell you have 18 feet of DNA. That 18 feet of DNA in that little tiny space, if it were stretched out in all the cells of your body, would make up 340 billion miles. Hello? <laughs> Did you hear that? 340 billion miles of DNA in your body. Now come on. Now come on. Now come on. Now come on. All right? You've got a little computer chip multiplied by 100 trillion times with 6 million working parts that's capable of producing 50,000 different proteins in some cases and as spinning out chemical reactions with an intricacy and a nanostructure and a, a choreography that science fiction wouldn't even dare dream of. And you have that in your body and guess what people? That system is very delicate, very fragile. This is six million working parts spewing out thousands upon thousands of molecules per second. Per second. It's fragile. It's delicate. But that's not a problem because nature's perfect. The divine force is perfect. It has taken care of it for us. You need do nothing. How cool is that? You need do nothing. And if you don't believe me, if you think I'm just talking, go cut yourself and watch it heal. And that's exactly what you will be seeing. Cell division and growth and reproduction and repair and regeneration. That is your birthright. That is our birthright. That's all our birthright. That regenerative process is our birthright, which is why nobody needs to suffer. It's built into the level of the cell. So you have this amazing piece of raisin. And all, or piece of, uh, amazing piece of cell, uh, amazing cell, amazing piece of raisin bread. It's a raisin. It's a cell. It's a small little structure, and it's like an animal. In fact, the guy who discovered cells was named Robert Hooke. And Robert Hooke was a glassmaker in the 17th century, in the 1600s. And Robert Hooke made this glass thing, and he turned it into a microscope. And the first thing he did was get a glass, uh, a drop of water, and put it underneath. And he looked in the water, and he was like, oh my god, because up until then, they thought water was water. Today, we know it's packed with cells. And he called these little things animalcules. That was the first name for cells, animalcules, because they're animals. They do what animals do. And what does an animal do? An ad or what does an animal need? An animal needs to be fed. An animal needs to breathe. An a uh, animal needs to detoxify. An animal needs to be fed. It needs to be nutriated. And it needs to detoxify. And that's it. And that's all your cell needs. It needs to be fed. And it needs to... Uh, be de uh, detoxified and it needs to respirate. It needs, ox it needs to be oxygenated. And all disease is the end result of cell starvation, toxification, and suffocation. Starvation, toxification, and suffocation. That's it, but it's at the level of the cell, not the thyroid. It's at the level of the cell, not the nerve. It's at the level of the cell, not the heart. Do you understand what I'm saying here? When we focus on the heart, and we focus on the bone, and we focus on the muscle, and we focus on the thyroid, and we focus on the brain, you're like the little boy with a finger in his dike, with the, putting his finger in the dike. Brain, head, oh no, now it's my legs, now it's my arms, and everything else. You go nuts, and that's the plan. And that's the idea, because then you can't do anything. You don't know where to go. Of course you'll let him take your gallbladder out. And that gets my gallbladder pain away. The problem is at the level of a cell. All disease, all of it, cancer, heart disease, all of it, cell starvation, cell toxification, and cell suffocation. And we're in charge of that. Now, the bread, you say, now your next question should be, why does the cell break down? Shouldn't that be the logical question? What's going on? Okay, great, so, does that make sense first of all? Did you guys get that? That was a very, very, very important point. All disease is cell disease. All disease, it doesn't matter where it is, it's the cell that's breaking down. Now, so all disease is cell disease, cell suffocation, cell toxification, and cell starvation, right? You want me to say it again? You look like you're thinking about that. Star <laughs> <laughs> starvation, su starvation, suffocation, toxification. Starvation, suffocation, 
Toxification. Mr. McGraw, is that good? 